Hey everyone, I'm David. And I'm gonna teach you fluent math, not American. Sorry, princess. Seriously, who in this day and age doesn't know what the hell a Great Britain pound is? So I was walking about X miles home today, eating wide bags of M&Ms, watching Z squirrels fighting over W acorns. Don't know what I'm talking about? And this video is for you. Today, we're gonna to discuss variables. And yeah, you're actually gonna do some math today and not just sitting around like the count from Sesame Street counting dashes on a wannabe battleship board. So up until algebra, you're probably used to problems like these. Now, what would happen if I replaced the four with an X? Well, you see that X there? That's actually representing the four. The X is a variable. This variable represents a number. The traditional way of solving an equation is to put the variable in one side by itself. As you see here, the x is accompanied with an added 6. We have to find a way to get the x by itself. To do this, we must move the 6 to the other side. We can do this by subtracting 6 from both sides. You subtract, or use any arithmetic operation for that matter, both sides to keep both sides equal so that the equation remains equal. 1 equals 1, for example. But if you just add 1 to one side, 2 does not equal 1. You have to add 1 to both sides, so your 2 can equal 2. Same with this. Subtract 6 from both sides. You're left with x equals 10 minus 6, or x equals 4. Which brings us back to 6 plus 4 equals 10. So basically, let's say there's a total of 10 fruit snacks in this bag. Basically what I am doing is, I'm eating, I don't know, 6 of them. So, 2, 4, If you subtract 10 minus 6, you get a total of 4. So bag F will equal 4. See? Oh, um, I uh, ate them all. Right. Similarly, if we were doing 10 minus x equals 4, we would have to subtract 10 from both sides, which would give us minus x equals minus 6. Now if we want to find x, we just switch the signs from negative to positive from both sides as well. This gives us x equals 6. Next, let's try this equation, 2x minus 6. You notice that we are talking about two x's. We don't have a multiplication sign between the 2 and the x because it get way too confusing. See? Anyway, what we want to do is solve for x. Since it is two x's, we need to change it into an x. We can either subtract by x, or easier, divide it by 2, which would allow us to get x equals 3. So in other words, if we add two bags of fruit snacks and six total fruit snacks in the two bags, then the grand total would be uh, no fruit snacks in each bag. I really need to stop eating this algebra, don't I? Similarly, let's do x divided by two equals six. And you can write the division sign one of two ways, by the way. This allows you to multiply by the denominator in order to get your answer. So if you multiply by two, then x equals 12 which the equation fits. Now let's try this one. What we see is two different terms of x in the same equation. However, they are of like terms. That is, they both are x's. You have 2x, and you're adding 3x. You add 2x plus 3x, and you get 5x. 5x equals 5. From here, you can just simply divide, which ends up with x equals 1. But what about this? Well, this is a different animal altogether. Basically, you are saying that you are looking for x, 2x's. The best way for me to do this is to show you how to represent this, and have x simply represent a number. I'm going to take the number 3. Let's remove the 2 for a second and just look at x times x, since 2x is simply 2 times x anyway. If we plug 3 into x, we have 3 times 3 equals 9. 9, if you know your pre-algebra, is 3 squared. That means that x times x is actually x squared. And multiply that by 2 and you get your answer, 2x squared. The x standalone is shorthand for x to the first power. And when we multiply it by another x to the first power, we get x squared. In other words, by multiplying, we're actually adding powers. Similarly, by dividing like variables, we subtract powers. Let's try a few right now. Ready? Go. Time up. Here are the answers. Now let's try something a little bit tougher. Ready? Be sure to press the pause button to get a little bit more time.
give up? Well, first, we're going to take 15 divided by 3, which is 5. That part is easy. However, we need to divide the like terms of x. x to the 7th divided by x to the 4th is simply x to the 7 minus 4, since we are subtracting powers and dividing, or x cubed. So your answer is 5x to the 3rd, or 5x cubed. Variables in general are used everywhere throughout life from accountants trying to determine the original price of an item before taxes, to using variables to analyze financial issues in micro and macroeconomics. Also, if you ever watched the podcast that I was a part of, Casual Mode, there's a girl that did not understand why people use the Celsius temperature system. Well, the rest of the world wonder why we use Fahrenheit. It causes a lot of confusion in many an internet conversation when asking about how the weather is like. To an American, a temperature of 40 degrees sounds cold. So everyone else makes everywhere else seem cold in comparison. For the rest of the world, an American says it's 50 degrees during late February or worse, it's 80 degrees during June, and it wouldn't be uncommon to see people think that America seems to live under a giant volcano. When converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, use the following formula, with F being the temperature in Fahrenheit and C being the temperature in Celsius. Now, here's a fun one for you. Find the inverse of this. That is, find the temperature in Fahrenheit to the temperature in Celsius. What would C equal? Give up? I'll go slowly with you on this one. First, we're going to subtract both sides by 32. You're left with F minus 32 equals 9 fifth C. Now you see a 9 fifth next to the C. It's not a whole number, but you can still divide by 9 fifths. Dividing by 9 fifths, if you remember dividing fractions, is the same as multiplying by 5 ninths. So basically, you multiply both sides by 5 ninths, and you're left with C equals 5 ninths times the quantity of F minus 32. You add parentheses so that you say you are placing the entire F minus 32 equation to be multiplied by 5 ninths. And that's the variable. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below on the problems that I've already done for you guys. Uh, just let me know if you thought they were e too easy and too hard. And that's the variable. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And join us for some additional videos by subscribing to the channel. Till next time, this is David saying, see you later everyone.